Hi, everybody, and thanks very, very much, um, Rihanna, and for all your very efficient organising, uh, and Wanda, too, for initiating this whole thing. And, and really, as everybody else has said, congratulations on the importance of this, on, on doing this at such an important moment. And um, uh, it's interesting, as, um, as Dame Meyer said, that today, you know, you open the paper, and one of the headlines is falling gender gap report to pay reporting threatens to erode equality. And it's like, you know, almost every day there are statements of that kind. We've, 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 we've advanced in many ways. Actually, there's, there's a deep reluctance on the part of man to actually concede um, equal pay. And I mean, that's true of the Dagenham women, because actually... Um, the reality is that although they they did, you know, win an important um, measure of equality, uh, and of course, you know, they led the Equal Pay Act. Actually, it, they had to wait 16 years before um, their skill was recognised. So, although it was about pay, it was also about recognition uh, and actually recognition of them as skilled workers, and that didn't come for 16 years. So, there's always this sort of slowness and. I really agree with um, the previous speakers, one on um, the importance of organising and, 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 and that means both the, the trade union organising as we saw in Dagenham and, and Diane has been part of maintaining and expanding and deepening and strengthening that tradition of, of organisation. Um, but also within the, the community and within society more generally. Uh, as was the case with the women's movement uh, at, at the time in, in the um, in the 70s. I mean, I remember, I think it was one of my first demonstrations, uh, going to the demonstration for equal pay, backing the, the Dagenham women, but also trying to push the, the legislative agenda. Um, I think also this question of value um, and explaining why women's work isn't isn't valued. I remember um, there was a cartoon in the early days of the women's movement where, um, I won't describe the cartoon exactly, but, but the words were equality. And the woman says, well, actually, we had something better in mind. <laughs> and I think that's because actually the roots of inequality in the case of women and um, their undervaluing actually points to deeper structural problems than merely, not merely, but than, than only the relations in the workplace you know it's a lot to do with the the nature of the sexual division of labor in society and the fact that so much work um concerned with reproduction reproduction of life reproduction of of, of people's capacity to work you know actually rests not only with women but but in the sphere of the household the, the private sphere so in a society that's that's dominated by money and is and work is valued according to to money and and wages then that work in the home uh done on the basis of personal relationships is not valued it's not seen as work i mean one of the i think distinctive um sort of arguments and struggles of that uh women's the movement in the 70s which is still um, this is part of the, the debate and part of the argument amongst feminists now is the importance of, of what we call domestic labor as labor uh, and you know there's a big debate about how that should be recognized whether it should be wages for for housework or we may must put stress more the the issue of of socializing uh, and reorganizing um, domestic labor whether it's to do with um sharing it in the household which means has got a lot of implications for shorter working weeks a changing in the nature of waged work as well as the reorganization of domestic work or whether it's to do with um more social provision um child care and so on and i think that actually this crisis you know in so many ways and ways that the other speakers have stressed revealed so much about the the underpinning inequality. And I think in relation to women in particular, I think the whole issue of the schools and um, the, um, the pressure from the government to, to, to get the schools going again. I mean, everybody 
you know understands that understands the the, the need for, for kids to be back at school but on the other hand there's so many issues of safety and, and so on but the the pressure from the 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 um the economy as it were from government shows that on the one hand the economy depends hugely on the work of women um often undervalued um and underpaid um but on the other hand um society also depends on their their private uh role in in the care of children so we have a, a, a crisis that reveals the reality and it's also an opportunity because in a way this crisis has been about the, the tension between the needs of the economy, the needs of, of production and, and the making of profit, uh, and on the other hand, the needs of health, the needs of, of care, the needs of, 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 of personal and family and neighbourly and community security. And so this is an opportunity to attempt to, to, to revalue and reprioritize um, the needs of of, of society, the needs of safety, the needs of care, the needs of children, and the needs of women. Um, so I think this is a moment when, um, in, in a way, uh, both strength and organisation in the workplace, and there we've got to recognise the difficulties of increased pre precarity, precarity uh, and the, I mean, the defeat um, of many parts of the trade union movement, and with that, the ways in which employers have exploited that weakness uh, to, to impose um, short-term contracts, zero-hour contracts, and all the, all the, um, the, the insecurity that now is, is, is common, particularly for young people. So it's encouraging to see the trade union movement and particularly um, younger activists attempting to build new forms of trade unionism that address that um, precarity and unions like uh, Unite uh, and, and Unison have begun to respond um, to that. Uh, and the Bakers Union, I think, has been particularly good to work with those, um, those, those new forms of, of organisation, which I think are crucial and often are led by women because often they're taking place in, in spheres like, um, like restaurants, like, well, not restaurants, but, but McDonald's and, and Weatherspoons and so on. Um, uh, where it's been women's labour that's been exploited. So there are many new new frontiers of organisation. So Dame Moyers, well, everybody's stress on, on getting organised, that tribunals uh, and individual women, you know, uh, who've done great things, but, you know, it's not enough. We have to be organised. And we have to be organised in new ways. So while we need the, the trade union movement as it's been built up over the years, but we also need to work with it to adapt, to be nimble and, and effective in reaching out to the, the more dispersed, more precarious workers. So I hope this seminar will help to stimulate that and to, to link with, um, in a way, we need, I think, given the, 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 the division of sexual division of labor, we need struggles on every front in the workplace and in the community for, for better provision, for provision particularly um, for childcare, and to to see to recognise the importance of of domestic labour as being as an essential part of the economy and a, a part that needs to be reorganised if women are to be truly um, emancipated and self liberated. Thanks.